Now, what I want to do now is change the names and the faces to complete this correlation, or actually a metaphor. You become a user, and the architect becomes an analyst, and the builder becomes software development personnel. Looking at this same situation, what do we find? Users come in. They describe what they need in a system in the physical world. The job of the analyst is to create an environment where they can hear that information. They come up with pictures, pictures of screens, samples of reports. They show it to the, the users. It doesn't happen on the first shot most often. It's an iterative process that goes back and forth and back and forth. And ultimately, what should happen is an agree to agree. Whether that's formal or a handshake, that has to do with the culture of the organization. But ultimately, it ends. And if it's done properly, we then go into the blueprint phase, which I will call a specification. And if I'm going to be consistent with the world of an architect, what is most important about that specification is it cannot be ambiguous. It has to be unambiguous, which means when software development personnel get it, they must understand it. And while they may have some questions, they should never be going back to users, and they should not have to go back on an ongoing basis with the analyst. Looking at it this way, then, what are we suggesting? We're suggesting that, in many ways, an analyst has an interesting responsibility. Number one, they have to have user skills. They have to be aware of the political situations. They have to be able to formulate an environment in which this process works effectively. Without it, they have nothing to produce their specification or blueprint on. The second part of their life is to turn around and be technical enough and to be educated enough to be able to create a technical document that would go to the software development people. So there's two very specific parts of the responsibility and in the abilities of what these people need to do. In many ways, you're, you're fighting a two-front war. You're doing both sides. You are, in fact, the person who generates the logical equivalent. One of the things to also remember is many people think that an analyst is not a technical person, but you wouldn't say that about an architect. However, I don't think an architect could build a building. They could certainly design one, but I don't think they could join the development crew and actually put the building up. On the same hand, a builder could not design a building. And that same situation should occur between an analyst and a software developer. They're specialists. Each is specialist in their own field. The other interesting aspect of this is uh, uh, another situation which is created by this which is of great benefit. Let's go back to the architect and the builder. Suppose the house is built. The house is built, it's up, and two years later you decide to add an addition to the house. You go back to the architect, right? Unfortunately, the architect has retired and has left. What do you do? Well, you bring it to another architect. And what does that architect do? The architect opens the blueprint, which is required, and what does that person immediately know? He or she knows how the house was designed and is well in a position to move on in repeating the same cycle again with the assumption that we already have a blueprint that we're starting from. He didn't need to talk to the previous architect because what was left was a blueprint that acted as documentation. Now, once again, let's go back and change the names and faces and make this an analyst. 
and make this a software developer. Under this same correlation, what would happen? Let's talk about software versions. We develop a piece of software. We have a structured specification, which is not ambiguous. We get it to the software development people. Three years later, we do a major enhancement of the system. What is the probability that the same analysts would be around? What is the probability that the same software developers are around? In fact, there could be a low probability that the same users are around. But what do we have? If we do this right, we have a structured specification, which is the documentation on the existing system. The important aspect of this is that the documentation was created as part of the creation of the product itself. Many organizations have struggled for years and years and years to go back and document what they have. And it hasn't worked. In fact, what is the value of software documentation that is almost correct? Well, if you think about it, it's no value at all. Because if it's almost correct, it's not correct. Ultimately, what I'm suggesting to you in the logical equivalent is that we need to come up with methods, and we have those methods, in which an analyst can do this part of their job and this part of their job and at the same time be documenting the system itself. So the implementation is the documentation.